All right, as always, I hope you are well. And um, what I'm going to talk about in this video uh, is the You're Not Special graduation speech by David McCullough, uh, who is an English uh, teacher instructor uh, at a prestigious uh, prep school up near Boston. And so he's giving this speech, uh, this kind of commencement speech at their graduation. And um, what is he doing? What's being criticized? Uh, well, essentially what he's criticizing uh, is an attitude that he finds prevalent uh, in contemporary American culture. And this is an attitude that is very much related to the first major theme of this course. The first major theme of this course is egotism, radical egotism, the idea that the world revolves around you. And he wants to critique that attitude, and he sees that attitude uh, as too often being displayed in the lives of his students. And so if we look at the central course question, which everything comes back to, uh, how much time and energy do I spend on myself? Well, the radical egotist says all my time and energy or nearly all my time and energy should be spent on me. And so again, that goes back to what David McCullough is going to criticize, uh, an attitude where people think that the world really does revolve around them. And he says this is what being special means, uh, often means in contemporary American culture. And so what he wants to do is to criticize that form of being special. He doesn't want to say all forms of being special are bad, but certainly the form of being special where you are uh, the center of the universe is bad. And he's going to point out to students, well, why is that in fact wrong? Why is it misguided? Well, he says, look, it's just as a matter of fact, uh, the world doesn't revolve around you. Uh, and he points this out in a number of different ways. He says, if you are the valedictorian here, you may feel like you are unique, you are one of a kind, you are the smartest, you are at the pinnacle. Uh, but he says, you know, at, on this day, uh, you know, there's 6,800, there's 1,000, 10,000 uh, graduations going on. So there's 10,000 valedictorians. There's, you know, 200,000 jocks. There's, um, you know, all these other kind of uh, lead to the play, you know, 10,000 of them. And while you think you are the center of your little universe, and that may be true, when you broaden the scope uh, and you look a little uh, wider, you see that you are not, in fact, the center of the world. And he has this great quote as well, where he says, in a world of 6.8 billion, even if you are one in a million, there are 6,800 yous just like you. So... Again, what he wants to say is to criticize a notion of being special where people think that you are the only one of your kind in the sense that you are superior, that you are the best, that people should look up at you and praise you uh, and recognize you as just being um, vastly more talented or intellectual uh, or good looking or athletic. Uh, than anybody else. And he says, when you broaden your scope in that way, you're not as unique in these kind of outward talents uh, or accomplishments as you think, because there's many other people that have the same kind of accomplishments. Um, and then he goes further, and I think this is really interesting, where he says, you know, if you, even if you look at the universe, uh, the earth is not the center of the, the solar system. Uh, the sun is the center, but the sun uh, itself is not the center of our galaxy. The galaxy is not the center of the universe because there is no center. So it's, again, this idea that everything revolves around you uh, is just false when you look at uh, the world a little bit more broadly. And so where does he find examples of where people do think the world revolves around them? Um, he finds them in a number of different places. And he said society far too often has promoted this idea, has enabled people, has led them to believe that, in fact, they are the center of the world. Um, so what are some examples? Well, he does the graduation. He says, you know, you think this graduation is all about you. You think that, you know, the people that are speaking here, the valedictorian, you know, the top athletes, uh, the king and the pr uh, queen of the prom, uh, that you're, you know, one of a kind. In terms of that, those categories, you're not. Uh, really, there's many graduates, and uh, you're part of a larger class, you're part of a larger group. It's not all about you as an individual either, because you're all wearing the same kind of uniforms and gowns. And again, the point there is to say, it's not all about you, you're part of something bigger. Uh, he talks about how societal rules are changed. 
Uh, this is the whole everyone gets a trophy mindset. You know, everybody's the best. Everybody should be rewarded. Uh, everybody has done something, you know, that is worthy of praise that they can put up on their mantle and have other people look at it. Again, society has kind of enabled uh, the mindset by giving out trophies perhaps too often. He talks about societal standards being changed. So the what was once uh, a C becomes a B or an A, and so people feel better about themselves. They feel like they are achieving more. Um, and he talks, you know, about parents who cajole, who needle, who, uh, you know, wrap their kids up and say, you are just the best, Johnny. Uh, you know, you are wonderful. You know, you can do nothing wrong. Uh, and so those would be examples of things that he wants to critique. So why do we feel this need to be viewed as so special? He says it comes, he thinks, this is kind of a hypothesis, but a really interesting one, from our fear of death. You know, the reality is in 200 years, 300 years, no one is going to care, unless you do something incredible, that you existed. And that is a sobering thought. You know, in a certain period of time, it's it really won't have mattered that you existed in the minds of those that are living. You won't be present. You won't be important. And to prove the point, you know, can you think of who your great grandfather or great grandmother was? And if so, can you think of their their parents, your great great grandfather, great great grandmother? You know, for many of us, they might be names in a family um, a heritage album or something like that, but they're not living. They're not remembered. They're not part of who we are. They're not a living presence in our mind, and that's going to happen to most all of us. And that is uh, a source of anxiety. It's, it's, it's not something that we like. Uh, we feel put off by that. And so to make up for it and to cover this anxiety, oftentimes we will try to um, make our feel, ourselves feel more important. Because if the world really revolves around us, well, then we must be significant. We must be meaningful. And our existence must have a reason to exist. And so that's why we like feeling special. We like feeling important. We like feeling like we're not nothing. Um, and so we try to cover over this dread of nothingness, this dread of death. And so what's the problem with the negative view of being special? Essentially that you miss out on life. You don't do things because you fundamentally enjoy it. You do things because you want the praise. You want to be recognized. You want to be held up on a pedestal. Um, you're also living in a, in a sort of delusion because you're not as special as you think you are. Uh, the world really doesn't revolve around you. And so you live in this kind of false sense of reality and you live in a, a way that you're missing out on important things. And so, uh, again, he's not criticizing all forms of being special. I think you can certainly make an argument that at the end of the video, he essentially says, being special can mean doing what you love, being passionate, uh, contributing to the world in your own unique way. And uh, that's where you gain a meaningful, fulfilling, and ultimately special life. So ask yourselves whether you agree with them. Do you think your generation is special, self in the sense of being self-absorbed, in the sense of thinking that the world revolves around you, or not?